Welcome to This Is My Architecture. We are in Tel Aviv, Israel. I am Benjamin from AWS, and today I'm joined by Oz from SimilarWeb. Hi, Oz. Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Oz, today we wanted to talk about what you guys are doing, but first tell us a little bit about what is SimilarWeb. Sure. So SimilarWeb is a uh it empowers companies to make better decisions based on market intelligence data. Okay, so I believe we're talking sort of about the production workload that you have, which is which is delivering data and content to, to your users. Um, I see right off the bat that you're operating in multiple regions. Um, tell me kind of how your application is built and why that's possible. Sure, so SimilarWeb is an analytics platform. Uh, means we deal with large quantities of, uh, of data about the way people use the internet, basically. Okay. Um, most of this data is actually generated in batch processes and happens on a daily and monthly cadence. Um, and this data is, gets written to both of these regions. We're talking about US East 1 and US West 2. Okay, so before people get too excited by saying, oh, active, active, it's great, yeah. I, can, I can do whatever I want, the reason is you're uh, creating batch, uh, batches of data and then publishing them simultaneously to two regions, but mostly this is, this is read-only. Yeah. And so you can afford to, to run active, active in two regions. That yeah, right? it's mostly read-only data. The only part that's actually being written to those regions is maybe user preferences, uh, and the way people interact with the system, which is low volume of writes. Okay, and the, and the vast majority of data, how is that published into the region? I know this is represented by EC2, but what's actually running here? So beneath that, we have uh, our data layer, uh, which is mostly HBase for the analytics data. Um, okay. And for the part that actually accept writes, we're talking about MySQL uh, and Redis. And again, this is mostly user information. Okay, so vast majority of data is being written into an HBase cluster here and an yeah. HBase cluster here. Okay, so we wanted to focus more about um, how are you routing traffic to the different regions and then um, some other uh, functionality that you're leveraging with Route 53 in order to do that in a way that makes sense for you guys. So walk us through um, how users are, are funneled through the system and, and kind of what Route, Route 53 is, is doing for you. All right, so basically we have, we're looking at this example. This is our API. Okay. Um, this is a, an alias record. Um, so users, when they resolve, when they first hit this address, um, which gets routed to, on each region, we use a Gale-based DNS uh, provided by Route 53. Okay. Uh, which resolves to an address which is external, but it's for each one of the region. It's separate. Okay. okay. So geo-based routing policy that is looking for the closest region for where a user is coming from. Exactly. You're running in US West 2, US East 1, so the one which is physically closest. Um, have you guys measured any kind of distances between the two regions? Do you know do you, for, for replication of data? Yeah, so the latency is around 80 milliseconds, okay. uh, which doesn't sound like much, but for databases that have to be in sync, that's a pretty long right. duration. For synchronous replications, that'd yeah. be an issue. Yeah. Um, okay, so so first is we, you determine this affinity based on which region is closest. What, what happens next? All right, so each one of these uh, external addresses, um, again, it's an alias record. Mm -hmm. It has a primary resolving. Uh, not always goes to the same region you're in. And it also does a secondary record where it goes across to the second region. So again, this happens on both sides. And this would be the primary here. Okay, what kind of record is this? This is also an alias record. Uh, and this one has a computed health check below it. Um, what is that computed health check uh, checking for? So two things. Uh, the first one is the liveness and wellness of the application itself. Okay. Again, within the region. This is also true here. Okay. Um, but it also has another health check. And for this, we use just an S3 bucket with a single file within it. And you need both of these health checks to pass in order for, for you to resolve that ELB. Okay, so the combination of whether this file exists and the actual health of the application is externalizing should you come here as a yeah, user. Yeah. Okay, what determines whether this file is here or not? So what we do, we have a Slack bot, uh, and we use it just to control whether the file exists or not. Okay. And this helps us to just, using the Slack, just shut down an entire region. That's basically the purpose. For, for maintenance, or because you've determined that there's an issue and you'd like to take a region offline. Exactly. Um, through Slack, um, you just take that file out, and then at that point, Route 53 says, I'm not healthy, and then externally, it won't bring additional users yeah, to that. Yeah, it just gives us a layer of manual control. Okay, why are you using Slack for that? Um, well, first, because we use Slack for a lot of different things that are like in this area. 
Um, but also it has the added benefit of when you do shut down the region, everyone knows about it. We communicate okay. it just in the same channel where people talk. So. Okay. It was, the, it was the common language that was used, and it's an easy way for you to say, publish this or do not publish this object. Exactly. Um, so once you make that determination, I want to take a region offline, I want to use this mechanism, how long does it take you to completely fail over to, a, to the second region? So we're talking about DNS, and like there's a specification, but not everyone really respects it that well. Right. Um, so usually it will take around three, four minutes to start migrating, let's say, 80% of the traffic off to the other region. Okay. Um, there's always like a long tail of traffic that still keeps on hitting. And, and that long tail is, is clients that didn't respect the TTL exactly. or cached it in some way. Yeah. It's either the clients or anything on the internet along the way that might change that TTL. Right, yeah. right. So you're, this is publishing 60 seconds, but somebody might still go to the old address yeah. three minutes later. Um, so so I, I guess that's kind of, that's something that, that's an engineering problem that you guys might be trying to, to, to think about. So is there a way to reduce that further? Yeah, so there is. Um, we talked about resolving to an ELB eventually. Okay. And, and assuming this ELB is alive, let's say the region didn't completely collapse, uh, what we're planning on doing is adding an Nginx or AJ proxy instance below that ELB that will just point to an upstream that's on the other side. Okay, so that is useful for cases where there isn't actually a regional failure, but you decided to take the region offline. And so now by just redirecting it um, from the healthy ELB, um, you, you can just reduce that three or four minutes to, yeah. I imagine, seconds. Yeah, right? basically seconds. What kind of scale are we talking about? Um, what is the scale that you're running in this, this Route 53 record? Um, so this example talks about our API, which is currently around a few thousand requests per second. Okay. Um, and this will be pretty much the average for most of our records. Okay, so this is really cool. I think, I think this is a creative way of, of solving a problem, right? You, you want to be able to check for health, and, and that makes perfect sense, but you also want to have that added control mechanism to say, I don't want this region online for right now. And you guys chose a creative way and common language to, to make that determination. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so thank you, Oz, for walking us through that. And thank you for watching This Is My Architecture.